exercise is activity eight. And in activity eight, we are recognizing voiced and voiceless sounds. I think we already talked a lot about voiced and voiceless sounds. It should be a review for you, but it's a good idea to practice. So you know that in English, the sound is either voiced or voiceless. It could only be two ways, either voiced all right, and you feel it in your throat. So when you put your hand right here on your throat, you feel, uh, okay, go, mm, uh, mm. You feel the vibration here? Okay, so that is a voiced sound. Say the word voiced. 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 Look at me. V voiced. 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 Mm. Can you feel the vibration on your lips? Mm. Yeah. Can you feel the vibration on your nose? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Can you feel on your nose? Put your hand. Mm. Can you feel it? Yeah. Okay. Why? Because the voice vibration starts here, but your head is a ball. It's a hollow thing. It's called a skull, right? But it's, it's, the bone part is on the outside, but inside, even though you have a brain and you have some other material, it still echoes inside. So this vibration here goes all the way up, and you should be able to feel the mm, vibration lips, mm, vibration on your nose. Mm, mm. Feel it. Your whole, all parts of your face should be vibrating. Mm. Okay, put your hands over your ears and say, mm. Woo! You can feel that vibration. Really, it's very obvious when we put two hands over your ears. That's vibration, and we call that a voiced sound. All vowels are voiced. In fact, the meaning of vowel means a voiced sound. Ah, e, 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 o, u, o, a. All of these sounds that are vowels are voiced. In any language, they're voiced. Okay? In English, they're voiced. Now, let's try this. Do you feel the vibration? No. Okay, so if you don't feel any vibration, that sound is voice less. Voiceless. 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 Okay, put your hand here and go. Voiceless. Okay? How about z, 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 voiced? Okay. Now, let me say the whole word. If I say the word step, what is the last sound? Step. 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 Voiceless. 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 How about I say feed? What's the last sound? D, 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 d. Voiced. Okay, I'll say the word. You tell me the last sound and you tell me voiced or voiceless. Tell me the last sound. Nourish. Nourish. Voiceless. Shh, shh, shh. Voiceless. Voiceless. Effect. Effect. Voiceless. Maintain. 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 N. Voiced. Voiced. Label. Label. Voiced. Class. 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 Voiceless. Quiz. Quiz. Voiced. Inch. Inch. Voiceless. Day. A. 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 Voiced. C. C. E. E. Voiced. Show. Show. O. 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 Voiced. All right. So you have to have an idea of voiced and voiceless. If you understand voiced and voiceless and you pay attention to the ending of the word, then you will know a lot about how to pronounce the things we add to words. So you know in English, we often add words we, put a, we have a base form word and we put letters at the end. Sometimes we put ed, sometimes we put s or es, sometimes we put ing. In English, we have a lot of words where we put a suffix and it has meaning. It has grammatical meaning and sometimes it changes the form of the word from noun to verb and it also has an effect on your pronunciation. All right? So if you want to learn better listening and pronunciation, you need to be aware of voiced and voiceless. If you don't want to speak better, you don't need to pay attention to it. You just can write. And nobody cares because the book doesn't speak. But if you want to learn speaking and listening, you have to hear it. And you have to feel it. And when you do that, huh, you'll know a lot about how to pronounce the words. So we have some words that um, end in S or ES. And we've, we've worked on these words before. So let's go to our power grammar on page 47 and review the, e, the S and ES endings. We learned about them in verbs, because we know that third person singular, present tense verbs have to add S or ES. Well, the same thing with nouns, right? So nouns that end in S or ES, these are regular nouns, they also have the three ending sounds. For example, when we say the sentence, some nutrients are water, carbohydrates, and minerals. Do you see that there are four nouns there? What are the four nouns in this sentence? Water, 
nutrients, water, carbohydrates, and minerals. But not all of them are plural. One of them is a noun count word, and it's not underlined. Which word is that? Water. water, right. A lot of liquids, you know, like water, juice, milk, coffee, these are not usually um, countable, so we don't have S on them. But the other words that are underlined in your book, they are plural words because we say a nutrient, many nutrients, one carbohydrate, many carbohydrates, one kind of, one mineral, many minerals. So these are count nouns, and they end in an S sound, and an S letter in writing, and sometimes S, sometimes Z, and sometimes is. How about the next sentence? So he says, your body renews its structures continuously. Which are the nouns? How many nouns do you see? Body. Body, okay, and? Structures. And also structures. You see two nouns. But only one is underlined because it is plural. Which word is that? Structures. Structures. Okay, so your body, that means an individual body. One body renews its structures, its many structures, continuously. continuously. All right, so you can have a singular noun for body because it means every body, each body, one body. Um, and structures because your body has many structures in it. So that one has S at the end, structures. And we have another sentence, some diseases may be very serious. How many nouns do you see? Two. Some diseases may be very serious. One, one noun, which, is, what, which noun is that? Diseases, right. Is it singular or plural? plural. It's plural. One disease, many diseases. And here we have the word some, so we know it must be plural, diseases. Okay, so when we say the word nutrients, um, the sound is voiceless, right? When we say carbohydrates, the ending is voiceless. When we say minerals, then we have to use voicing here. So this is our second ending, minerals. When we say structures, structures. We have vibration here, it's voice sound structures. And how about diseases? Diseases. 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 Extra syllable. Extra syllable. Because the, the word disease already has at the end, we have to add a syllable to have three syllables, right? So now we say diseases. All right, now repeat after me. Nutrients. Nutrients. Feel here that no vibration on the S ending. Nutrients. Nutrients. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Now feel the vibration for the ending on this one. Minerals. 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 Structures. 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 All right. Now add the extra syllable when you say diseases. 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 So are there any rules? Yes, there are some rules. So in spoken English, you know that the S or ES ending are pronounced in these three different ways. And the same, the same principle as what we learned in Chapter 1. So if the base form of the word, that means the form without the S or yes, if the base form ends with S or Z, we have to add another syllable. All right, like bus, buses, and quiz, quizzes. Also, if it ends with SH or Z, like wash, washes, dish, dishes, then we have to add another syllable. If it ends with Z, we don't have many words in English to add with Z, but for example, um, garage. Then we say one garage, two garages. But we don't have too many words, so you don't have to worry about this one so much. But s and z are very, very common. Also, if it ends with ch, like church, churches, watch, watches. If it ends with j sound, like judge, one judge, many judges, and edge for edges. All right? If it ends with those sounds, then you need to add an extra syllable. So we have classes, quizzes, wishes, garages, churches, bridges. Those are some examples. Bridges. Outside of those six sounds, bridges. then we notice whether the ending is voiceless. So in English, we have three very, very, very common voiceless ending sounds like p and t and k. So these sounds are voiceless. P t k. Put your hand on your throat. Feel. P t k. No voicing, right? So when we add s, then there will be p and pss, and kss. so cups and cats and backs right so these are voiceless everything else is voiced all the vowels are voiced and many consonants are voiced so we add like day day zzz. you hear the vibration and c c zzz. and meal meals and arm arms so which is the most common ending? Z. Very good. So if you're not sure, you want to take a bet, 
you need to bet on zzz, because if you use zzz, you will be correct most of the time. When you practice with your CD, you practice with the CD and you hear the, the bass form and the, um, the, the form with uh, the uh, S ending in writing and you have practiced with the s and is endings. Did you practice with your CD? Show me with your hands if you practiced. Okay, good. How about your practice quizzes? Oops. <laughs> Remember I looked at those grades and I looked at how many people had no grade? No grade means no trying. No trying means crying <laughs> for the teacher. Okay, so let me recommend. I can only recommend. I can't force. I can recommend that if you do more practice, you will learn more. All right? So I'll give you some principles. You also listen to your, your sound files. Then you need to use those sound files to give you the feeling and give your training to your ears so that later, when you don't have your CD, you're going to speak to people. You will pronounce it clearly because you know the principle. You have a lot of models in your mind, and you will pronounce it correctly. So the practice quizzes just show you the word. If you want to hear the word, you can go to the dictionary. But in the dictionary, they don't show you singular and plural. You know what I'm saying? If you look up the word meals, you won't see meals in the dictionary. You only see meal. So that's why I'm saying use the CD to give you the practice. Use, use the, the theory that I'm giving you now in my lecture to help you learn the principle so when you pronounce it, it will be nice and clear. All right? Now, we're going to go on in uh, our next lesson for listening to the lecture. So I would like you to listen to the lecture about nutrition and try the exercises that there are um, from uh, 12 through 17. It's not a long lecture. It's a short lecture. It teaches about nutrition. Probably some of the information is not new to you, so it's just practice for you to hear it in English and practice the vocabulary. We will do this. We will go over the questions that are in the exercises, and you're also going to practice your retelling like we did the last chapter. All right, so when you learn something well, you'll know it and you'll be able to talk about it. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.